keep themselves in this match. And just before halftime, those are important minutes. And I thought he had men on the outside, but he throws that big fin. Only had to go about three more meters, but it was a great try by Nikola Borsik. And it was a good reward for all the Chilean possession they've had on, in this first 40 minutes of play. Finally dotting one down. They really needed that one, Dallin, and that should give them a boost going into the clubhouse. Well, in the first 10 minutes, they certainly deserve to score a try or two. They finally put it together here late in the first half. And what a run from Anton Petrovic, the youngster, just 23 years of age, and his 18th appearance for the country. Puts his side into the 22, and Brusik finishes off with a wonderful try. There's another man who's done well throughout this first half, Giannis Eski. And you take that yellow card out of the play, out of the equation. They scored, I think, two tries and that penalty kick right off the get-go. So you take that out, and it's pretty much a tie ball game. Yeah, but, we wish it was that easy. <laughs> yeah. But Giannis Eski, again, every point so vital, especially when you're trailing. Looking to end this half on a high note here for this Chilean squad. Seen some great kicks by Albanel, and now he's trying to answer. Yoniseski, five tries to his name. Thus far, 80 points. His kick will stay to the right-hand side. So that brings the halftime score here. 27 points to three. Round four in the 2018 America's Rugby Championship. Take a look at this try again. Yeah, good work. And then Borsik again with two men on the outside. The defense, all he had to do was fend off the, the big attack by Doty. And did a really good job scoring that try. We'll take a short break. Be right back. 27-8. Uruguay lead Chile. Muy buenas tardes a todos, nos entregamos en el momento de nuestro partido, nos un pequeño concurso, sí, tenemos un pequeño concurso auspiciado por Oxford, que es nuestra, nuestro auspiciador principal de toda la ropa de los cóndores. Ostrich es ropa de alta performance directo desde Inglaterra. Vamos a hacer tres patadas con los jugadores que compitieron en la página. Tu nombre, por favor. Álvaro. Álvaro Casa. Vamos a hacer tres patadas cada uno. Izquierda, derecha y la mitad de la cancha. De la línea deportiva.
After 40 minutes, it's Uruguay who lead Chile 27 points to 8 in the fourth round of the 2018 Americas Rugby Championship from Estadio de la Pintana in Santiago. Four tries scored, three for Uruguay and one for Chile. A very interesting game so far. The first 40 minutes looks like Chile were up against them initially. And it started out with this line out down deep. Uruguay, very good in set piece play. And again, they splintered that mall off, drove it over. And it was Manuel Dina that got the game's first try of the game after a good start by Chile. That was in the 18th minute. And then the sin bin offense. Oh, well, there's the mistakes. All throughout this first half, Chile just kept kicking themselves, shooting themselves in the foot. It was Leandro Levas that dotted down again. They had the man advantage here. So it was a weakened back line for Chile. 20 to 3 at this point for the Uruguayans. And then still with Mateus Balbantin in the sin bin. Look at this drive here by this Uruguayan scrum. They did a really good job here. It sets up this wonderful two on one on the outside. The scrum have committed in tight. And that left Federico Favara all alone on that outside. Good pace for the winger, 27-3 at that point. Chile needed something good to happen at the end of that half. Oh, they certainly did. They relied on their youngsters to finally come in. They dominated possession in the early stanza. And finally, after the score, they bounced right back with their crowd behind them as well. And it was a great run out initially from Petrovic. And then it came to Nikola Bursic. Three on two, spotted the space though, got the fan and his team on the board. A fantastic effort from the lock. And that left the halftime score at 27 points to eight. We're gonna take another short break and come back with halftime stats. Stay with us here, 27-8 the score so far after 40 minutes.
And it's number 18 in the world, Uruguay, that lead Chile, who's number 25 in the world by 27 points to 8. We're here in beautiful Santiago, and it has been a very interesting first 40-minute tussle. Well, it certainly has, and I think if you're the Chilean coach, Mark Ross, you're probably kicking yourselves for the missed opportunities and the mistakes in that first half. You see the scrums, both teams undefeated in their own put-in, even though Uruguay and scrums look very good. They've each lost one. There you see the try advantage, Uruguay just one point, or one try away from that bonus point, and the kicking of Albanel has been uh, the main difference because there is such a wide gap in this contest. He has been outstanding with the boot today. But again, going back to that point, the, miss, the missed opportunities, I think, Mark Cross has to be pretty uh, unsatisfied about if you're the Chilean coach. All right, we're going to take a quick break and come back with second off action from here in Santiago. It is Uruguay 27, Chile 8 so far in this run for clash. Hello and welcome to you from around the globe, especially those watching in North and South America. It's Uruguay that lead Chile three tries to one with a score of 27-8 after the first four minutes. I'm Dallas Stanford, joining commentary by former USA rugby captain Brian Vizard. And this second half will be very interesting with Chile scoring the last points in this game. Yeah, and let's see if that's going to lift this Chilean team up. And again, they did do some really good things in that first half. They just couldn't finish. They got to improve in that regard in the second half but you you got to think that try by Borsic lifted the spirits going in the sheds referee Enrique Platas from Brazil has the whistle and it's Chile on the left of your screen in red that kicking off to Uruguay who look to receive this in blue been knocked but they pick it up do Uruguay and they're ready they've got some replacement players on the field as they put it to the toe on that far side all over this but well fielded by Anton Petrovic had a very strong first half so far. Soto goes into nine. And the ball knocked backwards. It's still there for the Chilean side. Uruguay coming, but Tussolat has this one. The hooker under immense pressure. Chile want to start off this half well. An offload so close to being made. So they dig this one out. Sabedra. Put it to the air. Might be too much and directly into touch. It depends on where you fielded that ball and if it was going to go into touch or not. So he looked like, a, according to the touch judge, and he fielded it in the field of play. And it's going to be the ear, or the Chilean put in, rather. So that's a good break for the Chileans. It certainly is. They come through with Dusselan. 
two tries for the hooker. Good go forward momentum. They take it with Sunino. Chile, just how they started, ended that first, that second half. Excuse me, first half. They're just doing it here in the second. Oh, that one's knocked on. Again, an error though. One of the white capitalizers, an open try line. Nobody home. And it's going to be a run in for the captain, Andreas Villaseca. Under two minutes gone in the second half, and he has scored the fifth try. We're going to take a look, though, to see what happened. Yeah, I think there was some obstruction there. It looked like one of the Uruguayans players was going to go inside for a support pass if needed, but he got involved with a Chilean player pursuing a defense, and I think that's what they're going to take a look at on the, on the replay here to see if there was obstruction that prevented that try. Esa zona, esta situación aquí, la voy a chequear. Si no obstrucción, voy a ver. And again, down just what we saw in the first half. Mistakes by Chile goes de right hecha. to the hands of the Uruguayans. And if it counted, it is going to be a bonus point try. Watch. There's the error again. And there's the, boy, there's the possible obstruction. Plus, he, he was defend almost, too. I mean, if I think if he just ran in front of it, it might not have been so bad but when he threw the hand out that may bring this try back well gaston mirez is the man in picture you'll be coming on the right of your screen right to left there he is that's obstruction get in the fend as well even though yanisewski might have been a bit too far away there was no need for that Otra vez? so they're looking for another angle yeah i mean he, yeah i think that's obstruction I mean, he didn't even have to take that line I think the try was already assured. I don't think Yanoseski would have caught him. Okay. Te quiero escuchar tu opinión ahí. Big decision here. Sí. Sí. Estoy de acuerdo. Estoy de acuerdo. El jugador, el jugador va intencionalmente y bloquea, y bloquea el paso del rojo. Es no try, no try, pero the only en contra Uruguay. That's good work okay. by the referee and crew, and they're going to bring it's it back. No try. And that's going to be you can hear all the cat calls by the Chilean fans. They saw that obstruction. Knowledgeable fans that they are. And it's going to come back. It's going to be a scrum down for Chile. Her full arm probably for Chile. Capitan. Capitan. Va a ser penal en contra. El jugador intencionalmente corre adelante para destruir el paso de rojo. Es sin pelota. No puedes destruir el camino de otro. Eso no está correcto. Eso es as my try there. Está ahí. Yeah, there's just no need. Yanisewski, there's no way he was going to get it. And the handoff too. Yeah, and it was just uh, the player who just came in the ball game, Gaston Miras. Miras, he had just came in and already cost his team a try. But that could be the break Chile needed. Who knows? Like again, though, it seems like every air they make it, the ball is just popping right up into the <laughs> Uruguayan hands. Well, that's the thing. Turnover ball is the most dangerous. But Chile are really gifting opportunities here to Uruguay with open grass in front of them. So the home side just to sure things up. Dusalant goes to the back. It gets stolen though by this Uruguayan side, and they bring in Omachaya. On the drive. Ball there for Uruguay as they go to the right hand side. Beautiful cut back in. Prada, the recipient, look forward. As the captain, they got pinged on that pass. Villaseca. Yeah, timing just a little bit off. Villaseca. To Prada, just front ran a little bit. Boy, it was close to huh? That looked really good referee right there they'll probably get some help from the AR Chileans they had no doubt it was forward get off the hook once again you just get a feeling though if this Uruguayan pressure continues the floodgates are going to open very capable back line a ton of experience amongst them as well and we mentioned Rebus, 22 tries for his country Silva has 13 Chile dig it up with Soto definitely one of the standouts this season for his side Fuente sets up first phase. Chile with Domingo Saavedra have been told to use it. Made his debut in 2017, the tour of Hong Kong. 
play some players coming in and out for these sides. Knew it would be a factor in every game. High kick. Oh, and Monster! What a tackle! Petrovic showing no mercy for the substitute. Gaston Mirez, and then the interception! It's Chilena racing away with this one! Belvantine, well, that's a way to strike back after getting a yellow card in the first half. Try number two for Chile. And you said it, that's the way to uh, pay back your teammates for that Sinbin offense. Scoring a try, good intercept try by Chile. You saw it coming. Bob Bontin certainly did as he stepped in front of that Uruguayan pass. Nothing but green in front. And able to run that last 50 meters with the ground down. So that's exactly what this Chilean team needed to start this second half. 27-13 now totally in this ball game. Easy conversion to follow for the fullback, Yanisewski. There's a crunching tackle again. Petrovic has been outstanding in this match for Chile. That was a great monster hit, perfectly timed. Right when he gets his feet back on the ground, Petrovic just crushed him. I, I think from the reaction of the crowd, that conversion was good. 27-15 now. 46 minutes gone, and it would have been a try for Uruguay if they hadn't interfered with that earlier. And instead, it's Chile with 15 on the board. 27 for Uruguay, just 12 points the difference. And Herman Albanel. Well. It's a good take there from Chile. It's their captain, Javier Richard, getting involved. They keep ball in hand still. Now the kick goes high. A bit too deep, and Mirez glides through a couple. Mirez looking to make amends. Flicks it back on the inside. Beautiful ball. Favaro looking for his second try in the corner and he gets in. Uruguay strike back. And it's the headband of Favaro that gets his second. And another good score here for the Uruguay side. Well, it certainly was. And that's how you reply to a, a giveaway try where Chile just stepped in front of that pass. Good team try by this Uruguayan side. That's the bonus point. Now they just need to put the finishing touches on a victory here, but yeah, Favreau just had too much pace out distance. A couple of Uruguayan def or Chilean defenders, including Yaniseski, just able to ground down in front of his tackle attempt, and that's how you reply. Well, he did have to beat a few of his own defenders as well. We noticed that last try. <laughs> yeah. It was Miraz that got involved. This time he's the creator of the score. And as you mentioned, a bonus point for four tries scored for Uruguay. Albanel looking to keep his 100% strike rate intact. Sublime stuff from this fly half as well. Those extra two and three points keep the scoreboard ticking. In this case, up 32-15 with two more up for grabs. I mean, how about that, Dal? Two guys who uh, kind of hurt their team. Belbin team in the first half with that sin offense. He scores that try. And then that obstruction taking away that try just a little bit ago from Miras, he's the one who led to this second or this uh, first try of the second half for Uruguay. That conversion no good, 32-15 now in favor of Uruguay as Albanel misses his first of the day. That's right, this Uruguay inside, round one. They beat Canada 38-29, they took out Brazil 27-18, and they lost to the Argentina 15-34-17. They're in the driving seat right now, good take on that far side. Obachaya, quick hands. Oh, he works very nicely there with Diana. And then just not rolling away, just a lot caught at the breakdown. Yeah, he was tied right up. There's a Chilean player down. But yeah, just he could not get out of that breakdown area. The Uruguayans kept him in. He was right in the way of the ball to come out to this Uruguayan back line. Referee. Plateau's no option but to get that full arm penalty. Uruguay 
try go for the touch. Another good clearance kick. Two of their players made the America's Rugby News Team of the Week. That was Tomas Inciate, the scrum half. And Juan Manuel Cap, who's not in the fixture today. That's the last little look at that penalty. Doing pretty well there is this Uruguayan side now at the breakdown. Yeah, and I kind of like the little scrum half for Chile here. Sabadra, he's done well for the 20 year old, four caps only. I think he's had a really fine game against a very good Thomas Enciarte. Certainly has. Stolen at the line now. Chile come away with this one now. High ball over the top. There's space there. And goes downfield with a kick. Miraz is there. Runs outside of his 22 where he received it. Saavedra has the swallow, has knocked it on, Saavedra will be furious with that. Oh, especially five meters out, scrum to Uruguay. Well, you can just see the Uruguayan forwards just licking their chops. Watch, he's going to look up, take his eyes off the ball just a little bit. And that was enough okay. to make that knock on. A, just again, another cinco, silly mistake by this tres, Chilean team. Unforced error, probably number 10. In Chile, here, look at Uruguay. They've got their forward pack together. Okay, here's what we're going to do. If they don't do a, a pushover try attempt here, I'd be very surprised. Substitutes coming in. Basilio Diaz and Nicolas Garafulik for Chile. Winning their second and third ARC appearance. Yeah, it looks like Benitez, number 16, is in for Uruguay in the front row, and Diego Magna, 78 caps, he's into the second row for Uruguay. A push over, scrum you mentioned is going now. Clear pathway in front, and they've yeah. jumped over and scored a great try. Can it be any easier for number eight, scoring his second one, Manuel Diana? Boy, that was just so easy. You could just see the control on the scrum. They knew what they were going to do. They've done it many, many times in practice and in matches. The only thing was it going to get turned too much. That was the only question. But Deanna did well to control at the base. Not always easy when your scrum's going that fast and you're trying to control ball at the base, but he did a really good job. And you really want to pick that ball up about a meter short and then just use the momentum. That's exactly what he did. Use the momentum of your forwards. They almost kind of like block and clear that line for you and had the opportunity with some on back teams to do that. But uh, Diana, just uh, an outstanding scrum by this Uruguayan side, and he puts the finishing touches on it. Try number five for Uruguay. chance for them to get their reserves into the field as well plenty of time left in this game Albanel's kick fantastic strike that'll take us out to 39 15 after 52 minutes and it's Uruguay that has scored two tries in the second half and now we talked about this competition the ARC how it benefits all these six teams in the competition you get a lot of young players out but here again is some good work by Uruguay and there was the first intercept try against the run of play in that second half. That was Balbantine to score the try to get Chile a little bit closer with the last two tries by Uruguay. Oh, they certainly did. So three tries already in the second half. Entertaining match. Very physical as well. These forwards going at it. Tomachaya and Diana in there. Finally, Uruguay shifted across. They bring Prada in. Prada with a fan. Drops the shoulder as well. Good tackle on him from Belbontine, the try scorer. And then Diego Ramirez on the field, now earning his third cap for Chile. He's wearing 23. Uruguay come back to this close side. Flat ball. They dive onto this one. Adolfo Garrisse in his 10th appearance. Loose pass. Fani bounces up for Uruguay. Shall I be looking to score their second try against the run of play? There's Juan Diego Omachaya. Debut against Portugal in 2011. Sets things up. Abinel's kick. It's another monster. Janiszewski drops this one and the flick pass. And just floating forward. 
doble. Yeah, Januszewski's been pretty good under the high ball and hasn't made uh, many mistakes in this game, but that was another one that was going to bounce right into the Uruguayans' hands. It seems like they've gotten all the bounces in this match of the Uruguayans. There you see the shake of the head by Januszewski. He knew he should have came down with that ball. But once again, mistakes have hurt this Chilean team, and that looks like, uh, I don't know if that's a cramp. It looks like a cramp for Chile, but that's going to give time for... This Uruguayan pack to decide what they're going to do on this scrum. Just get good, solid platform ball for your backs. There's Janiszewski. May have just taken his eyes off the ball at that last second. That flick would have been dangerous if that was on song, but just a little bit forward. Good call by the referee. Yeah, there you saw. Janiszewski just heard some footsteps. And there was the flip. Just a little bit forward. Okay. But what we were talking about the competition itself, I mean, it's a great thing for all these six countries. You got the Argentina 15, they're coming, they're the young guys in Argentina, putting pressure on the Pumas for spots. 15 guys in the first two years went from Argentina 15 up to the national team, the Pumas. So it's great for them. For the USA, we have so many players in Canada coming in for the pros overseas. It gives all these guys an opportunity to play that many more games together. And then you got teams like Uruguay, Chile, and Brazil, probably towards the bottom of that tier two, but they're getting valuable games. Every time you can play with your teammates. And again, as Gary Gold mentioned, those teams that are in the World Cup, there's only about 17 more games before 2019 in Japan. So every game is so vital. And it's trials for all these players to stay on their national teams no matter what level or what competition they're playing in. Well, it certainly is. Uruguay actually traveled to Namibia in November last year, and they beat them twice, 52-36 oh, and 39-34 that southwest hey. africa area so this competition very vital indeed we'll play some players coming in for chile we have alfonso escobar beltran bagara and benjamin pisosora they come in for the side as well and to that point uruguay they just beat canada to qualify for the 19 world cup right so they're all these guys again the young players and they got a lot of veterans we talked about all the caps they have in their lineup but again this is those opportunities when they're maybe not in that higher uh, upper tier of Uruguayan players. You get to have that chance to, to show what you can do in front of the coaches. Well, good front foot ball to attack with, and the loop around is excellent. It's been knocked down by Chile. And this Uruguay side, you're right. Big collision there. They will qualify as America's number two as this little tussle goes on. They will play New Zealand and South Africa in that pool at Rugby World Cup 2019. But still, what an honor to be there. Oh, yeah. Anytime you're there, I mean, no matter who you're playing, whatever pool, you, you made it. That's, that's the key. You've done the first step right, you've gotten there. And then if you can uh, pull off a game or two, that's just bonus. You're not expected to do great things there, but if you can pull off that upset, that surprise, play tough, that's all you want to do. You want to play 80-minute contests. You want to just show the world that you do, you do belong, but they got the first step out of the way in qualifying. That was the big thing for them. Meanwhile, we're going to have a review here for some foul play off the ball. But those results, you're right, were... Uruguay beat Canada 38-29, the best of, of points difference in both clashes. And then 32-31, they beat Canada as well. Canada losing out on points difference and, of course, the scoreline. Okay, there, there's the little, here's going to be the flick pass. It went be, was it, is, are they looking at an intentional knock-on or are they looking at what happened off the ball? Off the ball is my take, a couple of pushes, a little head-to-head -head action. Yeah, it was Balbantine and... I think it might have been Albanel. Yeah, I think it was Albanel that came in. Yeah, not a whole lot. Not unless there was something that we missed before they went to floor. This might be the better angle. Uh, yeah, there's nothing there. I think it was just scragging and they, they wanted to do a little dance and one partner got upset and that was it. Not often you see a referee getting to see the action up close and personal. But that's how we do it here to get the right call in this game. Take another look at this. It's a good set piece move. Just knocked down though by that Chilean hand. Uh, it was by Balbantine that had the knock. They got to keep running in here, see if anything happened. 
Oh, there it is. There's the question. Did Belbontine lift Albanez yeah. off the ground and throw him down? Yes, he did. Yeah. Oh, no. Belbon Would that be red then? Two yellows is a red, isn't it? Yep, two yellows equal a red. That would be a big blow. There's still 25 minutes left in this contest. That would be huge for Chile. Belbonte just has to have better discipline than that. Both players, really. The ball is way gone. There's no need to pick up a player here. And he just never let go of Albanel. Yeah, I think I think Belbontine's going to go. It would be a yellow card if he had ball in hand, and now without ball in hand, <laughs> it's going to be more than that. Santiago, dime si compartes. Yo veo una jugada. Well, let's not forget it. Belbontine already been in the box, right? Que right. levanta y derrumba el número 10 que se cae de cabeza. Es juego peligroso. Tarjeta roja. Correcto, estoy de acuerdo. Okay, dale. Número 14, rojo. 14 red. Numero 14, Rox. Yeah, yeah, that's not, that's not yeah. good. That's yeah. what you don't want to hear. Capitan? Sí. Hay juego desleal. El jugador lo levanta sin pelota al oponente y lo clava y se cae de cabeza. Esto no yeah. tiene otra opción red. sino tarjeta roja. That's his second yellow card offense, so it equals sí. red. He's gone the rest of the day. And that's a big blow for this Chilean squad. Belvantin shaking Capitan, his head. Sigo pidiendo colaboración y de todos. O sea, colaboren. I don't think the no referee had any choice but to uh, send him off. Tiempo, okay. There's definitely a yellow card offense, but that's going to be a real demoralizer. Sí. Now, if you're Chile, you suck it up, play hard as you can for 14, you gotta, or do you just kind of fade in the dark? Because this Uruguayan side have certainly had the better of it here in the second half. Belvantin scored that try against the run of play but it's been pretty much Uruguay here in the second 40. Well it's a case of a very talented Uruguayan side so even if Chile have 15 on the board you feel Uruguay pulling away here with that extra man three tries were scored in the first at least two tries in the first half so Uruguay now go to their pack they've got a set piece move they come back to the short side it's a move Chile did last week and Uruguay aren't able to get over initially so they move it away from contact in there as well is Diego Magno, got to try against Brazil. Ball is still there. Uruguay committing numbers. There's space to operate. Shall I better be careful? Bodies lying over that ball, concede a penalty. They're in the red zone, they do just that. Five meters out, they want to go quickly. Yeah, I think if you're here, well, you just stop, get a scrum here, and just drive over. Yeah, so you saw the captain. I mean, <laughs> it's almost a uh, guarantee the way this year going forward pack has uh, scrum today, and that last try that they scored was from that pushover try. So you just got a feeling that then Diano's looking for his third of the day from in tight. Scored one off a line-out drive, scored one off a scrum drive, and now looking for his third up close. And there's good respect. These teams play against each other quite often. You see the players coming on and off. Even when uh, Mel Bontin got to the bin, they gave him a little you know, a slap. So. That's right. That was, friendly slap. that was probably out of joy as well. <laughs> so scrum time here, and it's Matias Ben Nites, the 30-year-old, wearing 16 for Uruguay, who's in the front of that pack. They peel away with it. Chile do well, though, to stop the initial pushover try. Uruguay still with ball in hand, ranging up for that try line. Ball against the pad will count as well. <laughs> there it is, still available. Finally, they dig it out. Numbers to burn, the dummy thrown, try scored! It's try number six, and no number on the back of that jersey, just to confuse the commentators. But it's Uruguay 44, Chile 15, and Dillion is credited with that score. The player wearing 21, which you can't see. Yeah, Andres De Leon benefited from that good forward drive by this Uruguayan pack. And they softened things up. They committed all those players in tight. They thought it was going to continue to be amongst the forwards. But De Leon, once they spread that ball, showed a nice little dummy on the outside, created a big gap for himself. 
Look at the show right there. There's the little show. The defense was stretched out wide, and then he had just one big man to beat, and that was the reserve prop for Chile that came in, number 16, Rodrigo Moya. So very good try by De Leon. Yeah, good first touch okay. for the replacement player. A lot of the reserves getting into the fray right now. Okay, okay, claro. And De Leon made his debut against Brazil just a few weeks ago from the old Christians Rugby Club. So a new kicker. Just a try scorer from a little earlier. Federico Favaro. Also from the old Christians club. His kick is over. 46 points to 15. About the 60 minute mark. And it's not looking good for Chile in this final 20. Oh, it certainly isn't. 20 minutes left. And again, a man down. The confidence is down a bit, I would think, for Chile as well. They tried to repel that Uruguayan forward pack. They did pretty well there. Time and time again, there were some big crunching tackles, but that opened things up out wide. This kick needs to go 10 meters. It doesn't. Option. Okay. Scrum down. Yeah, just nothing going right for Chile. Now, we saw a lot of mistakes early on, and even when they did get passes away, it seemed like a lot of times the receiver caught the ball flat-footed, allowed the Uruguayans to really come up and drive them backwards. Uh, Uruguay played 27 times against Chile. They beat some big scores in the recent times, 55-13 in 2014. It's one of the largest score lines in Montevideo. Well, I think this is going to surpass that points differential. They're already about at that same point per, per differential now with 20 minutes to play. Full iron penalty. And that's, again, the reputation of a good scrum. No matter who goes down, the more powerful team usually gets the call. So the captain, Andreas Villaseca. His 11th appearance in the ARC competition puts in a beautiful kick. Yeah, it didn't look like it was going to get into touch. We saw a couple of missed kicks in the first half that allowed Chile to counter. But this time, just over the line. And you see a lot of dejected Chilean fans now. They were really revved up at the national anthem. It was one of the most spirited renditions we've seen in a long time. But Uruguay now totally in control of this match. The reserves coming in. Get some legs out there for both these teams. Number 17, Sebastian Otero. Just four caps. He's come on at hooker for Chile. Who I go to the back and Chile have the steaming onto that beautifully. And his reserves have certainly sparked the home side. A couple of hot steps in midfield and dropping the shoulder beautifully. Diego Ramirez, the 20 year old. Then they shifted across. Belgara getting involved quickly, the replacement halfback for Chile. They have advantage, very vocal, the crowd. They want them to finish strongly here. That's a danger man. Petrovic was superb in the first half. Set up that try that Borsic scored. That's the captain, Richard. Advantage over, Advantage is now over, they've got some width created. Janiszewski takes it to the line. They've worked their way up from inside their 22 all the way to the halfway line as Chile. Diving over that is Pissarro. Now Borsek. Uruguay need to roll away. Deep attack. Do their bust through Ramirez. Good couple of touches from the replacement. Chile, quick hands towards the touchline. Alfonso Escobar, also 20 years of age. One of the young players that played in the Junior World Trophy. The tournament took place in Uruguay last year. They go wide. Petrovic lurking. Playing in the backs is the loose forward. Still to that far side they go. Energy sapping stuff here in 60 minutes gone. Chile, a couple of short runners. Uruguay equal to the task. But never say die attitude here for the home team. So Uruguay down after the physical contact. 
Petrovic for the third time in this movement. Borsek measures. Uruguayan rolls away. Oh, the intercept. It's been taken. This pass into open space. Miraz with a clean run in. Justo Miraz has scored for Uruguay. And you have to feel for Chile. They had kept possession all the way to the halfway line. And just like that, it's try number seven for the visitors. Yeah, talking about the run of play that Chile has scored a couple of tries. This is how Uruguay got on the board. And I think it was the skipper that stood in front of that pass, Andres Villaseca. I mean, you could see it. He was just standing right in that channel. The pass came right to him. And then he did the right thing. And Miras was a little bit faster. Watch this. There's the pass. And Villaseca was right there. He got the, the, the speedier Miras. And Miras, no doubt about it this time, scoring the try to widen this Uruguayan lead. And, you know, it was a spirited Capitan. few minutes of play there for Capitan. this Chilean squad. There's the pass, just a wild Necesito pass back conduta. in, trying to keep the okay. yes, penal, passage going, but it went right to Villaseca, and he put the reserve conduta, in with some fresh conduta. legs. He came into the second half, and again, these replacements have done well here for Uruguay in the second 40. Now they certainly have. You see yellow card, De La Fuente gets shown a card, so down to 13 players, and it is trouble for the Chilean side. Ball in hand, they were superb, but now they find themselves down 53-15. Uruguay, Uruguay. And De La Fuente, his yellow card, has now gifted Uruguay a penalty in the halfway line, up by two players. Well, that's tough to see. You don't want to see that, the lack of discipline. No matter what the score, you got to keep composed. And again, full arm penalty, down two men. It's going to be a long last 15 minutes for this Chilean squad. And you just got to wonder, is Uruguay going to just continue to attack, attack, attack? I would think so. And it could get ugly. It's a good opportunity to get your set piece moves, get your reserve players up to speed as well. Chile. Yeah. yeah. Chile have done the same thing. All their reserve players are almost in right now, so we'll see. Yeah, if they haven't done so, you're going to see the whole bench for Uruguay cleaned out because they got that big game coming up next week with the U.S. Try to Carlos Abaleo is to throw the 32-year-old. 67 appearances now for his country. They go to the front, their captain. Contract on him, Valaseca. One quick ball, shouts for it, and then the good goose step going on the outside. Just needs to put him down. Oh, Diego yes. Magno <laughs> has he scored. Oh, the veteran. I'm surprised he did just did dot that ball down. The momentum of the tackle carried him over the line. He thinks he was able to ground it, I think. Uh, is the referee going to take a look at it? Yes, I think they're going to take a look at it for the grounding. But it looked like Magno wanted to get that ball away to his teammates. He was over the line. He had plenty of time to ground it. I guess the question is, did he? Your no grounding. See, your no appearance. Well, this should be a great view. Exactly. Looking for his 10th try. Great fan. He gets tackled short, and now he's looking to offload. Look at that. The momentum carried him over. Was he able to ground it? I don't think so. I think there was a good defensive play by Chile. Really was. What a tackle. <laughs> that you wrote <laughs> that last attempt there was. It should still be Uruguay put in here in the scrum five meters out. Well, Diego Magno. Here he is again. Okay. Okay. Hold up. Scrum. Yeah, good defensive play at that time. It was the Chilean reserve number 19 that made that play. Nicholas okay. Garofalic. Just two caps. Making his second appearance for Chile. Made a try saving tackle there. So still plenty of fight left in this Chilean team. Yeah, stunning effort indeed, Nicholas Karaflik. He actually was part of the Chilean 17, 7 side team that qualified for Rugby World Cup in San Francisco. Happening in July. Chile will be there. Meanwhile, scrum yet again. They have one push over try already. Ball's been kicked and they're over the line again. Another great score. And it brings up try number eight. That is five in the second half, and it is scored by Manuel Diana. He gets himself yet another a hat trick. 
Yeah, and again, the Uruguayans did, did, did so well. The Chileans stopped that initial shunt, but with the ball at the feet of the number eight, they, they just started re-driving. And good coordination. You, you practice it if you're in the forward pack. You practice moves like that all the time where it's initially stopped, but then you kind of reorganize. And Deanna had a little trouble this time. Watchy kicks it so far away, but the forward pack going so far, so fast forward. There's the kick away right there. Lost a little bit of control, but it stayed in front of him. And then just one man to beat. He stepped back inside. So good control at the end by Deanna for his hat trick. And the route continues for this Uruguayan side. It certainly does. They've passed that record score I mentioned in recent years. It was 55-13 in 2014. Are now already 58-15. It's 10 minutes to go. And Chile will still be down to 13 until the 75th minute. De Leon scored a try with his first touch as they rotate the kicking chances it's a nice strike it'll stay to the left hand side the flags looked like they almost were raised on that occasion again a lot of cat calls from this Uruguayan squad did they give that conversion successful I don't think so we don't see it on the scoreboard yet 10 minutes left in this contest flags to go up apparently 60 on the board there to 15 as Uruguay really causing some havoc here especially in the second half Prada gets quick hands away Mirez cuts back in does well. Quick hands. Uruguay upping the tempo of this game. They know they've got two players extra on the field. They've lost that one. A strong tackle from Benjamin Pissarro. I don't know how they ruled this good. I mean, from this angle, I just don't see it. But they're in a better position than we are. They're right under the sticks. Yeah, that was a nice tackle that time by the Chilean defender, number 22, Pissarro. Stops that movement for Uruguay. Keeps this Chilean team inside the 22-meter line, I think. Or is that the 10-meter line? 10-meter line, I believe it is. That was a good jarring tackle. Knocked that ball free. Allows Chile to have the put in. So Chile lost to Brazil 16-14 and then gave away 57 points to 12 against the Argentina 15. Lost 45-13 against the United States. But right now, they dig that one out. Too well to keep possession to Chile. Sunino. Almost trying to shield from his own player. There was Garafulik. So Chile go quickly. Bagara. He's got Bursik with him. Beats one. Tremendous stuff on that far side. Alfonso Escobar. Right, that scrum cap. Another penalty. Uruguay infringing twice in a row. Are oh, they 10 meters? They're in the red zone. Chile hammering at the line. Pissarro. Ball spits loose there from Rodrigo Moya. Goes backwards. An advantage they're playing. Uruguay racing away. There's nobody home. And it's going to be another great score cantering in. Manuel Blengio gets his try, the 23-year-old. And that is 65 on the board, kick to come, try number nine. And I wonder if they take another look at this. There might have been a knock on down it by that 22-meter line. Let's see. I don't know if the ref's going to go back, if he's going to get a little assistance from the AR. But right now, it's yet another try. Let's see if we can take a look at it. The ball's free at that point. Okay, now, yeah, I think it was a good try. And Blengio just got that pass. 
one man to beat, and then it was just stretching the legs out. 65-15 now in favor of Uruguay. And the, we talked about the floodgates open. That was before the two yellow card defense. We thought it was going to open up a little bit, but uh, with two men short, they certainly have opened those floodgates. Lots of tries now. Four in the last 14 minutes. Now ill-discipline costing the Chilean side. In a couple minutes, they will get back. De La Fuente, just a yellow. They will not get back. Balbontine scored that intercept try, but yellow card in the first half, and his second yellow card in the second, meant to red. Kick is over, 67-15. Six minutes to go in this round four clash. Yeah, but that was better played by Chile. I mean, there's still some, some spirit, some fight in this team. The forwards did well. The reserves have had a hand in a lot of the, the play, the good play. And let's take a look, look at it in close. Wow, it's going to be kicked around here a little bit. Yeah, we're not going to see the, the full effect, but to give your way some credit, they've taken advantage of just about every mistake that this Chilean team has made. Oh, they certainly have. Very talented outfit. They go wide. Good ball. Meraz, his pass is knocked back to Prada. To the halfway line, Uruguay march. They come back here. Great take by the captain. Flicks it back in field. Skills from Villaseca. Chile infringed the breakdown. Full on penalty. Yaniseski better get out of that one. Not rolling away. Yeah, great take by the skipper Villaseca. One handed. It was the low pass. He did well. Get that ball back in the field of play. And there's a few occasions of the Uruguayan side. They did well. They looked like they were pinned, by, about to be bundled. And the touch did well. They come back in, stayed on their feet, wait for help. And another thing they've avoided is throwing that 50-50 pass. They've just taken the ball to the floor for the most point. If they haven't had a free shot at getting that ball cleanly away, and that's just set up their attack brilliantly for future phases. Carlos Abelia. Fab tries for his side so far, goes to the back. And it's Omachaya. Good pick and go forward ball by Magna. Uruguay threats in their forward pack, and then of course their dangerous back line. They flick away. Omachaya goes for a light himself. Teammates are with them. And then knocked on. That should be a penalty, shouldn't it? Knock on, the man played on the ground. Chile off the hook for the moment. There's Ormachaya. He did well. Yeah, one more turn of his body. I think he could have gone over the line. Had a little bit of help, but then the Chileans came in defensively. And there was the knock, and Ormachaya played. I think it should have been a full arm penalty. Yeah, Chile. The screen is correct. Not many backline players out there. Yeah. Tough time in the scrum, but they get away with this one nicely. Escobar. Plays at the Pregas All Boys side alongside with many of his teammates. They set their forwards driving here to Velasco Torres. Head coach Mark Cross has some positive things to work with. And this kick goes down to the 10 meter mark. And it's out. Lo pisas. Pisas. I think that should be a year ago and put it in the hole, shouldn't it? I think he was standing in touch when he caught that, and I think the ball was in the touch. No. Hey, AR says he feel it to feel the play. So it's going to be a Chile throw in. Yeah, the line's already set. Can't go with a short line out there, or the quick line out. Still some enterprise in the Chilean team, though. You like to see that? Yeah, that ball was definitely in the field of play. His foot was out of play, so that is a good call by the AR. Chile, with the last say in this game. They go to the far side, digging out there is Begara. Uruguay's defensive line still holds strong. Double team tackle. Great work there from Diaz, the 23 year old. Now Chile. Spread the worth Janiszewski. Loves to break out from there. Excellent cover defense in the end of that side from Levas. 
Yeah, first time in the game we've seen a winger just get bundled to the touch. It's been pretty good awareness when all the wingers have gotten hands on the ball, and that might have been the first time we've... Uh, Sunino, I guess, has had his hands on the ball a couple of times in that first half, but they've done a really good job bundling them up Have this Uruguayan defense. He's scored tries against Argentina 15 and the U.S. Last week he scored the second try of the game. But the Uruguayan defense has done well today. Uruguay looking to host the United States next weekend. Chile, meanwhile, take on Canada here in Santiago as this game winds down. Still Leon thrown down to the deck into the last minute. They turn it back on the inside. Good skills to keep it alive from Uruguay. Chia, yet again. Benitez. Leon goes very deep. So it's Prada. He's tackled high. High tackle. Yeah, Petrovic, still plenty of fight in him throughout this whole match. I think he's probably been their best player, their best forward for sure. He's been all over, still a lot of. Still a lot of fire left in number seven's belly. A little high tackle that time on Prada. Prada's been another one. We called his name a two, few times in that first half, not so much in the second half. Oh, oh, oh my. Great skills to keep in the field of play. Knocked it backwards, it's fine. A little fake kick. Runs into a couple of traffic, does Sunino. Chile, good hands. Petrovic now moves it across. Still looking to play a positive brand of rugby on the home side. Bursic, look at him go. What a breakout from the lock forward. Bursic just had supporters on either side. Took it to deck. That pass looks forward. That is a siren in back play and puts an end to this game. And it's Uruguay. That had steamed the second half with six tries. They have defeated Chile 67-15. And it was the yellow and red cards that did damage to the Chilean side. A tremendous effort indeed, keep your ball in hand. We'll take a short break and come back in just a bit. It is Uruguay that have 67 and Chile 15. And it has been a tremendous second half effort. So we'll take a few moments and be back with you soon. Round four in this clash belongs to Uruguay, 67 against Chile, 15.
11 tries scored here at Estadio de la Pintana in Santiago, Chile. And it is the home side that go down 67-15 against Uruguay. And a very exciting second half if you're a fan of Uruguay. Chile, though, a couple of cards, put them to the sword. And there were plenty of good scores, though. Many from turnovers as well. Can we take a look at some of these stats? Yeah, both teams were perfect on their scrum, although Uruguay, I think, had the better of it with a couple of pushover tries. The lineouts, both teams had a little bit of trouble there. But look at the try scores, 9-2. to two. Penalties conceded. Again, Chile, you don't want that uh, when you have the most in your column. Successful kicks. Kicking game was perfectly on for Uruguay today. But it was those silly mistakes, I think, that cost Chile more than anything today. And, you know, it was always going to be a big ask for this Chilean team to beat Uruguay. But those cards really hurt them. And it was the forwards for Uruguay that did a lot of the damage. They scored a lot of pushover tries from set piece. And then the mistakes. They really cost us. Chilean squads are about four or five tries off turnover ball and that you know Chile did a couple of good things but uh, there were just too many weapons in this Uruguayan side. Uh, so thanks for joining us in Santiago Chile where Uruguay have defeated Chile by a score of 67 to 15 in the fourth round of the 2018 America's Rugby Championship.